Baseball players turned real estate tycoons David and Jason Benham are known for being bold. Still, they say when it comes to winning people to Christ, boldness is only half of the equation. I'm Jason Benham. My name's David. Our business is named after me. That business is the Benham Companies. It's a multi-million dollar real estate empire founded by twin brothers David and Jason Benham. In 2014, the twins made headlines when they were hired, then fired, by HGTV because of their stance against same-sex marriage and abortion. Today, the Benhams encourage Christians to stand in the gap for their faith and others and explain why we need to be that vital connection between people and God in their book, Bold and Broken. And please welcome back to the 700 Club, the Benham Brothers, David and Jason. You got it. I got it and right, David right? Jason. David and Jason. All right. Congratulations to you. Oh, thank you so much. Two and a half weeks in. Two and a half weeks in. It's going great. <laughs> awesome. Not an expert yet, but, uh, you know. It's coming. <laughs> Tell me, first of all, I love the title, Bold and Broken, uh, Becoming the Bridge Between Heaven and Earth. Um, why is brokenness so important in our in our walk and our testimony? You know, it's interesting. When people hear the word broken, they think they're out of the game, but actually you're in the game. In Scripture, in Psalm 51, it says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. When we were kids, our dad used to say, boys, only those horses broken by their masters mm. are fit to pull the king's chariot. The rest are left to pasture. So brokenness means submitted to God, broken over our own sins. And now we have a proper uh, response to God. And now we can see other people the way God sees them. Instead of us wanting to try and just prove our point, we actually love a person. Yeah. And that's the way that we need to engage in these cultural battles today. I was just thinking about broken bones. Sometimes when they heal, they're, they're stronger, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. That, but that's also why we wrote the book, because right now in our cultural context today, especially with comments from the, well, actually laws from the New York legislature, comments from the Virginia governor, and you, th you see kind of the craziness going on in the yes. culture. Why we think this book is so incredibly important is because a lot of people are wanting to stand up boldly and, and take a stand. Yeah. Our book shows you that there are ditches on both sides of the road when you do that, because boldness apart from brokenness makes you a bully. That's a ditch on one side. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, brokenness without boldness makes you a bystander. Right. And this is where a lot of Christians find themselves today is in that ditch over there where, yeah, they're broken over their sin and they, they're humble and they're submitted to God, but they're not willing to stand boldly. And what we would say is that you need to stand boldly fueled by brokenness. And when that happens, you become the bridge that connects heaven to earth, mm -hmm. that connects God to the people who need that connection. I know you guys have been speaking out about this craziness that's going on in New York, Virginia, Kansas, wherever, um, all over the country with this, you know, it's so hard for people to even understand how people can think this would be okay and how there could be legislation. What do you make of this in our culture? Why do you, and, and what can we do about it? Yeah, well, it's the culture of death. And, and, and here's what happens with the culture of death. And it's a spiritual battle. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Right. So I'm not, it's not a Democrat, Republican thing. This is a spiritual, moral gospel battle yeah. that's taking place in our country. And it, it says in scripture that those who distance themselves from me harm themselves and all who hate me love death. We're seeing that. We're actually seeing it manifested. But that's why the Lord tells us in Scripture in 1 Timothy 3.15 that the church is the pillar and support of the truth. It's Christians that have to speak. We have to shine the light. The problem's not the presence of darkness. It's the absence of light. That's why we have to engage by being both bold to speak for the unborn and also by being broken so that we're speaking with a heart of compassion. You guys have an example of this when you were, you were on a flight and there was a, a lady who was a self-proclaimed uh, flaming liberal feminist. Self, yes. She said that about herself. You sat down next to her. Uh, what happened? Well, I was actually asleep. It was <laughs> sleeping <laughs> against the window. I was on the aisle and we had a seat in between us and she comes walking up. And, uh, and I had my Bible open. I was just sitting there reading and she said, I'm sitting between you. So I hop up, I help her to her seat. Sure. And I put my Bible and I just start reading again. And she just looks at me and says, I just want you to know I'm a flaming liberal feminist. I believe nothing like you. Now, I, I was really <laughs> kind of taken back, and I said, hi, I'm, I'm David. Nice to meet you. <laughs> well, what happened was 
I just uh, immediately my flesh was like, well, I can prove to you why this is true and your, right? you know, <laughs> worldview is wrong. But that wasn't the way to go about it. The Lord pricked my heart. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. said, you need to just ask some questions and just begin to love this lady. So yes. I just began asking questions and about an hour in, we're 30,000 feet up. <laughs> she began talking about her children and how they were filled with anxiety. One of them had depression. And, and he, her in her own heart, she was really heavy. And so I just felt the Lord tell me, read Psalm 139. So I asked her permission. I said, would you mind if I read to you a passage of scripture? And she said, sure. So I opened to Psalm 139 and I let her, as I'm reading it, she's reading with her eyes. And I'm telling you, about two minutes in, her chin starts quivering, tears start rolling down her face. And she says, I can't believe I'm telling you this, but all my adult life, I have been having this recurring dream because I was adopted at birth. And she said, and I'm in my dream, I'm in this incubator looking up at the doctors saying, don't worry about me, I'll take care of myself. Wow. And as she's weeping, she got right to the heart of her feminism just by hearing Psalm 139 talk about how God was with her even before she was formed in her mother's womb. Well, after Jason woke up from his ugly face, <laughs> He was just sleeping. I was tired. He was exhausted. <laughs> he finally wakes up, and then the two of us begin to minister to her. Oh, we prayed with her, and by the end of that flight, she was asking me for more scriptures and writing them all down. It was just an amazing way oh. that God allowed us to connect heaven to earth for her. I love that story so much. And um, <laughs> praise God, she, you know, you changed a life on that flight because you used. You guys are funny and you have a sense of humor. Instead of being offended, sure. you, you you know, you knew how to handle that. Um, well, you bring an analogy also in your book of fishing. Uh, how do we become fishers of men? My my new husband is a fisherman. Who, that's his favorite. If he could just fish 24-7, he would yeah. be happy. Um, how do we become a fisher of men, well, it's though? A, it's a great question because what we have to first see is that if you're going to be that bridge between heaven and earth, that you have to recognize that when God wants to touch the material universe, he's going to speak through the portal of man, which means he uses people to bring that connection between heaven and earth. So that's the first thing. But then you've got to recognize that wherever you go on a daily basis, that should be your fishing hole. That's the way you have to see it, is your fishing hole. So where do you grocery shop on a regular basis? You're probably seeing the same faces over and over. And these people need a connection between them and God. And you can be that vital connection. So you simply see them as the people that you need to connect. That's your fishing hole. Go fishing. Be a good fisher. Shine your light. Say something nice. Say God bless you. Say Jesus loves you. And when you do that, you can be an amazing connection for them. I have found that that is so true, especially with the people that live right around you. If you live in an apartment complex and you just, you kind of just pass and high, but sometimes if you just take that extra minute That's right. to really find out how they are and, and maybe can I pray, pray with you, That's it, right. it, it can change everything. Millions of Christians can do this yeah. and the culture will change over time. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you guys being back on the show with us. It's good to see you. And you can get more from the Benham Brothers by getting their latest book. It's called Bold and Broken, Becoming the Bridge Between Heaven and Earth. And it's available wherever books are sold. David, Jason, God bless you. And thanks for being with us. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Great to be here.